Albon is all over the back of Hamilton, who once again forces in the long way round. Norris goes the long way round on oh, Perez, no, and Albon again. again, no, with Lewis Hamilton. He's lost out once more as it was in Brazil. He comes off second best. The cars touch, and the podium that looked a certainty has been wiped out in a matter of seconds. This guy is such a failure. I, I felt like I did the move already, and I was kind of already focused on Bottas in front. Um, it was just so late, the contact. And yeah. Oh, and there's a puncture for Valtteri Bottas! Ran, he ran across some debris. He ran across debris that Hamilton, was on the track. Hamilton takes the lead. Bottas, in the lead, has now got a puncture. Oh, my God. It just blew up on his own. That is just tragic. Like his tyre stripped away from the rim, the wind stripped away from Bottas, who's not even going to finish here. Not much else to say. Everyone saw what happened, so just, I guess, unlucky. And, and there goes Gasly. Boy, that's Gasly. He tried to overtake the Toro Rosso down into turn six. I just saw that uh, before. I think they might have touched Crofty. We can see it now, down towards the hairpin. Alex Albon ahead of Gasly. He's going to stay in the uh, in the slipstream, and I think he just runs into the back of him as he pulls to the right. He does. No. Oh wait! No! And that caps a pretty miserable afternoon for Pierre Gasly. It has to be said. Got to be done like a couple of times. Didn't go completely our way, but in the end, yeah, just disappointed not to be able to finish the race because there were clearly some uh, some opportunities. That is the Alfa Romeo of Antonio Giovinazzi, and he's gone off at Puon. I hope Antonio is okay. This is what happened to Antonio Giovinazzi. That dropped him in corner. That's unusual. Yeah. That's at about 175 miles an hour. Antonio, are you okay? Yeah, I'm okay. I did my best race in F1. Uh, we did a really good comeback from P18. Then I was P14 after the pit stop, and uh, back in P9. And uh, I think uh, the pace was really fast, uh, and this is really important. So now I want just to forget Spa. Grosjean had a second place. Is he lost? Lost gears? Lost drive? Lost second place? And oh, what is happening in the heat of Valencia to these Formula One cars today? Okay, man, sorry. Just a battery issue. We lost all the data. We couldn't do anything. Oh, that cut absolutely. Stone out, didn't it? Yeah. No. Just over that little jump at the start no. of the bridge. Frustrating afternoon for the man who was leading and the man who was in second place. Into the pits anyway, comes Lewis Hamilton. He goes straight on into the gravel trap. Can he keep the wheel spinning? Can he get some momentum going? No, no he can't. It's all going to get away from him. He's not allowed to get a push. And, uh, well, the chance to be leave here as the world champion seems to have gone away. He was struggling like mad on those tyres out there. And uh, they didn't bring him in, the McLaren team, any earlier. And uh, this is the result of it. I was disgusted because I haven't made a mistake all year. And uh, to do it on the way into the pit is, is uh, you know, not something I usually do. Look at that, Hulkenberg right on Hamilton. He is, Hamilton slowed by the back markers, he locks up. Hulkenberg might just go through here, and back up into oh. the lead on a touch! And Hamilton and Hulkenberg Damage. come together. Damage for Hamilton and Hulkenberg. And the back markers getting in the way and seemingly ruining the afternoon for Hulkenberg. There's Timo Glock on the right-hand side. Hamilton is now kind of caught in the middle, but he's got past Glock. As a little squirm there from Hulkenberg, and his slide went into Lewis Hamilton. It wasn't Hamilton's fault, it wasn't really Hulkenberg's fault. That's what happens on the greasy track. Uh, Lewis fancied coming inside, and uh, yeah, it's uh, Hulkenberg out of control. And just half a spin and slams into the McLaren. It's Rosberg in the lead. Rackinen on the inside of Valtteri Bottas. Rackinen takes second place in this contact in the back. And it's the two Red Bulls that are getting tangled up. Danny Fiat and Danny Ricciardo. And I think it's maybe Ricciardo that came off worse. And there's a spin. There is a spinning Ferrari of Sebastian Vettel. And he is out. Crash.
somebody hit me in the rear, turn two, and then somebody hit me in the rear again in turn three. For sake, honestly, what the are we doing here? You'll see the Red Bull, and it's going to go clean into the back of the Ferrari there, so knocks him around yeah. into his teammate. Here's the Ferrari down the inside, as you say. Fiat hits him there, then Ricardo has to go wide, bits of bodywork all over the place. That is massive disappointment in his home race then for Danny Kvyat. This was another crash and uh, yeah, obviously not a great, uh, not a great uh, first lap for me. The safety car has got the lights gone green and Bottas is away. There's a big crash at the back. Oh, that's not good. Yeah. And poor Nicholas Latifi. <laughs> just couldn't limp around on three wheels to get back to the pits. How frustrating, because this could have been a weekend of opportunity. Yeah, I mean, it definitely looked that way. I mean, we avoided the chaos at the start. Uh, we were feeling quite good about the race pace, so it's, it's just a shame. It's, yeah, it's really unfortunate. The gap between Leclerc and Hamilton is 10 seconds. I don't want to put any curses on anybody, but with 15 laps to go, this is looking utterly beautiful uh, for Charles Leclerc in his second race for Ferrari. There's something strange with the engine. Okay, copy that, we are checking it. There's something strange with the engine. Oh no, I hope not. If, if he doesn't win, he's, he's got to stand on the podium. It, it, it would be utterly heartbreaking. What's happening? Leclerc has lost a lot of power and that's going to cost young Charles Leclerc victory. So Lewis Hamilton down towards the final corner takes the lead of the Bahrain Grand Prix. Sometimes it's just not your day and today it was not ours. Uh, we've had an issue with an uh, yeah, electrical issue. I, I could not recover any more energy and uh, then we were just slow. Uh, so it's a shame today. Kevin Magnussen after pitting in the Haas and after performing superbly well in the opening 22 laps of this race, Kevin Magnussen on for a really good haul of points and is having to stop and by the looks of it, Martin, would you think one of those wheels is attached yeah. properly? Thank you, guys. Yeah, let's just have a little look here. And it doesn't... Yeah, look, saying it on, on the rear left, he's saying, no, it's not on properly. And, and that would have been the man we saw slamming the door and walking yeah. off as well. That is, it is absolute rotten luck for Kevin yeah. Magnussen there. Yeah, as I say, it's a tough, tough one to swallow, but we'll fight back. Lando Norris, uh, a long way clear of Sergio Perez running in fifth. They'll be absolutely <laughs> delighted if he could come home uh, with uh, fifth place for what would be his best result in F1 so far. I'm losing power, I'm losing power, it's going. Okay, keep going, safety car. Uh, keep going, keep going for now. Keep I going. can't, it's broken, it's broken. Anti stall, it's I'm off. Charles Leclerc wins the Belgian Grand Prix. Norris was stopped on the line as well. Yeah, I noticed that. Yeah, if it was one lap short, I actually would have made it over the line and uh, seen a checkered flag, but I didn't. Max Verstappen finding grip around the outside again, and away he goes. Past Esteban Ocon, down the inside goes Daniel Ricciardo. Esteban Ocon's been passed, and he's now in 10th place, and it becomes ever more vital for Mana that they get after Felipe Nasser, who's scoring four points at the moment. Alonso homing in on Ocon. Esteban Ocon down in 12. Sauber go ahead of Manor in the Constructors' Championship. Yeah, just very disappointed for the team. I mean, they deserve that point ahead. They work really, really hard. I mean, yeah, I just couldn't, couldn't do it, but I, I feel sorry for the team. Disappointing news uh, over the last 24 hours for you, for the team, that this relationship will end. I have to ask, how did you find out uh, and how long did it take you then to, to release the very uh, emotional uh, statement that you did? It was pretty fast. I found out last night that I was not staying. It was a late, late call, but uh, now at least the news are out and, and we can get on with it. All the, all the feedback that I got until yesterday was that I was going to stay. So if they're telling you that you're going to stay for sure, I, I wasn't looking elsewhere. Um, 
because I was pretty sure I was going to stay. My target is to continue in Formula 1. Uh, I still have a lot to give, but it will depend if I'm able to find the, the right equipment, a team that really wants me, that really believes in me. Good project for 2022, and, uh, and then we'll see. You know, uh, I think everything at the moment is an option. Well, there's your race lead up. From there, going behind Felipe Massa is the man chasing him. How can he possibly drive this car with the tyre in that condition? Even if you're on the roads and a policeman saw that, he'd pull you over, and quite rightly too. This is incredible. The man is driving at an average speed of 128 miles an hour around a racetrack with a tyre that has no place on a racetrack. The lead down to 2.7 seconds, and uh, now we get a good shot. Look at that, it's just moving around almost on the rim, the tyre there. There it goes, the tyre, let's go. He just misses the VAR, and I said he should have pitted. I told you, he would have got a podium if he'd pitted, instead of which he's going to get absolutely nothing. Neither us or the team have any regrets of going for it because we're here to try and win the World Championship. Daniel Ricciardo, the race leader, Lewis Hamilton making his way into the swimming pool. Chique now, they have got the tyres ready. The tyres are ready. Ricciardo is sat there waiting. Did he make the call? Did the team make the call? Whoever made the call, the tyres weren't ready. Super soft tyres going on. Hamilton now makes his way around Anthony Nose, the final corner. R Ricciardo put in a really decent lap, but is it going to be enough to come out of the pits and lead this Grand Prix? I'd rather get the feeling but it's going to be tight one. Here comes the Mercedes of Lewis Hamilton. Ricardo on the inside. Hamilton takes the lead. But Ricardo, of course, has that inside line into Sandoval. Hamilton now leads after a pit stop that saw Daniel Ricardo sat stranded waiting for his tyres. And Mercedes, after the second round of pit stops for Red Bull and the first change for Hamilton, lead this Monaco Grand Prix. Save it. Nothing he's can say can make that any better. Just save it. Yeah, I'm not not in the mood to uh, to be given the whole pep talk and all that all that stuff. Um, not interested right now. Oh, and that's George Russell behind the safety car. George Russell out, who was handily placed, and obviously and was running in the points. But George Russell out of the race. He's weaving around trying to keep some tyre temperature up and a boot full of throttle or something and he's just dropped it. That's exactly what he's oh, done. No. I don't know what to say. And like I say, I feel like maybe sometimes I've been a bit too conservative in the races. And I definitely found my limit today. Oh, Ted, Carlos Sainz has left the yeah, pit. Yeah, it's a loose wheel. They had it a is problem a loose with wheel. It. They had a problem with it in the pit stop. They took it off, put it on, took it off again, and then put it on again. And that is such a shame. That's a, a race retirement. They have to stop. Otherwise, they would have been disqualified for Carlos Sainz. And he was in a fight. Let's see if there's a safety car. Everyone getting ready down here. He was in a fight with uh, with Nika Hulkenberg for P6, P5, P6. Let's let Hulkenberg off the hook on that one. Yeah, they just, there's a problem with the wheel gun there. He stopped, he started, and he went, and by the time he'd gone, the realisation was there uh, that that wheel was not on properly for the second weekend running. Carlos Sainz retires from a Grand Prix through no fault of his own. Yeah, it was um, uh, an intense pit stop where I think we, we first couldn't fit the front right tyre properly, then the green light went on and I thought we were ready. Chicane hardly got squeezed up against the fence for Williams, an innocent bystander in that. There is a packed grandstand of Lance Stroll supporters down at the hairpin, and the local hero didn't even get the chance oh, so to race past them. Yeah, they're all uh, packed up behind the leaders, and unusual to be so wide in turn five. I'm a little bit surprised Brendan was out there, to be honest, but not as surprised as Lance Stroll was. The car got loose on me, I corrected it, um, but there wasn't enough room for both of us and uh, by the time I corrected it, we made contact and then went into the wall. And that is Max Verstappen, the race leader, and he has spun coming down the hill and there's a Force India there as well. Did they make contact going through the center S's? Here's the onboard with Max Verstappen. 
down the inside he goes. What a idiot! What a idiot! He was coming back at him to unlap himself, wasn't he? Mate, I don't know what to say, mate. Yeah, no, I know what to say. I hope he. I can't find him now in the paddock because then he has. Look at that. Oh. Yeah. of the race, Sebastian Vettel. He has been leading almost from start to finish, but now he's out of this race. A massive disappointment for the championship leader. He's locked up, going into the hairpin. Here it is. So, Vettel into the Sachs curve. Sick. Sorry guys. Disappointed, so uh, small mistake with a big impact on the race result. <laughs>